Hello and welcome to the Making a Model Organism Database webinar series, Part 1, Building the Database. I'm Alexander Shearer, speaking for the Bioinformatics Research Group at SRI International. And in this two-part webinar series, we're going to walk you through using our Desktop Pathway Tools application to make your own model organism database off of any annotated genome. Now, as I mentioned, this is a two-part webinar series. In Part 1, this part, we're going to cover what you need to build a database and then using pathway tools to actually make your database. In part two, we'll cover refining your database and editing your new database. There are just a few things you need to make your own model organism database using pathway tools. First, you need an annotated genome. We don't handle annotation. Basically, all you need is a GenBank file and a FASTA file that goes with that genome or GenBank files and FASTA files, plural, in case your genome has multiple contigs, multiple chromosomes, chromosomes and a plasmid, etc. We can handle all of that. Then you'll need the Pathway Tools software with Editor and Pathologic. Now you can get the Pathway Tools software for free if you're an academic or government user from our website. To get the software, you'll have to sign a license, but again, it's free. Uh, you'll just sign the license, someone from our group will contact you, and you'll be able to download the software. Let's take a quick look over at the website to show you where to look for that information. This is the BioPsych homepage, and if you're interested in looking around and finding the kind of software download you'd like, you just go down here on the left, down to Software Data Download. Just click on that, and it will bring up information about what you can download, everything from flat files that just contain the data, to the full software setup that you'll need if you want to make your own model organism database using Pathway Tools. All the information is right there, and you can email us if you have any questions about specifically what you need to download. Right now we have versions of Pathway Tools that are available for Unix machines, Linux machines, and Windows machines, and we've actually successfully run the Windows version on dual booting uh, Intel Macs also. So once you have your copy of Pathway Tools installed on your local computer, then you can go ahead and make model organism databases just like I'm going to do in this webinar series. So once you have the software and a genome and the files for that genome, you'll stick them all together and what will you get out? Well, you'll run that genome into pathway tools and out of it you'll get predicted metabolic pathways, predicted operons, predicted pathway hole fillers, predicted transport reactions, and an editable model organism database for your organism of interest. Now let's look at that in a little bit more detail. Here's how Pathway Tools actually works. And again, we call this subset pathologic, the part that figures out how to make a database out of your annotated genome. What happens is you stick your GenBank files and your FASTA files in, and the software first identifies all the genes, and identifies when there should be gene products of a given type, you know, an RNA, a protein, that kind of thing. Then enzyme functions are drawn from the annotation. And this is an important point because our initial set of enzyme reactions are based on what your annotation says is there. We're name matching. So if you, for example, say that you have some kind of glucokinase there that we have in our large array of reactions in the Metacyte database, which is what we're referring to, then we'll predict that we'll add a frame for that actual reaction, we'll add links to the original protein, etc. And one of the upshots of this is that if you go through this whole process and you come out with very few predicted reactions even though you have a big genome, you want to go back and look at your annotation and see if the GenBank file that you're pulling from uses the format correctly. Uh, if it does something weird in how it identifies the products, there may be something we need to hard code around because we find different groups have different ways of using the fields in a GenBank file and not all of them are parsable by our software right now. It may also just mean that you have one of those genomes that doesn't actually have a lot predicted for it. If you have just waves of hypothetical proteins, we can't do much with that. But ideally, you'll get a good set of reactions out and that'll be step one. And then in step two, we predict pathways from the predicted enzymes. So we've gone through your genome annotation, we've pulled out the reactions that we think are there based on which enzymes the annotation says are there, 
and then we're going to predict metabolic pathways. So for example, if we see three different enzymes from the TCA cycle, we're probably going to predict the TCA cycle. Now, the entire prediction process, I'm not going to go through in detail in this webinar. You can read about it in some of our publications. Uh, we attempt to avoid some false positives, but we err on the side of predicting a little bit too much instead of a little bit too little because it's better for us to guess about things that are there than have you edit it out later instead of underguessing and maybe cutting out some results that you wouldn't have thought of but that are very important. So once we have these pathways predicted from the predicted enzymes, then we can go ahead, we can predict operons, or more properly, transcription units. And again, how that's done, I'm not going to go into, but that's described in our publications. Then we predict transporters, looking at the annotation and looking at some of the details in the transcription units. Then finally, as a big and important refinement process, we predict pathway hole fillers. So for example, I mentioned above, if we found three enzymes in the TCA cycle. Well, obviously, if we found three, we've missed a lot of them. And it may be that they just weren't in the annotation. Sometimes it's because of, as I said, quirks in the annotation, and they're really there, but there was a typo. Now, once you really start using software that depends on genome annotations, you'll notice how many typos there really are in an average GenBank file. But so we have, say, our TCA cycle with three enzymes in it. We'd like good guesses at what the others are. And so we have an entire software package, the pathway hole filler, that makes those good guesses. And again, I won't go into the details, but it uses a number of mechanisms to pick high-scoring genes that seem likely to code for different steps in those pathways. And you can go through and manually evaluate all of those results, or if you're doing a lot of these, you can go through and just set a cutoff and accept all the things above the cutoff, which is what we do for our biocyte collection. So this will fill in additional guesses. And this is one of the ways that this is useful, not just for making a model organism database, but also for helping in a genome annotation. Because you can imagine a process by which you do an initial genome annotation using normal genome annotation tools. Then you run it through pathway tools, and you run it through pathologic, and you run it through the whole filler. And you look at what was predicted in the whole filler step, and go back and add those predicted functions to your annotation. So it's not just a tool for making a database, but it's a tool for annotation refinement also. OK, so that's the overview of what we're going to do. Now why don't we go ahead, grab ourselves a genome, and get started. OK, so here we are at NCBI's page that lists all the completed annotated microbial genomes that have been publicly released. Now, there's 566 completed microbial genomes as of today. By the time you're viewing this webinar, that number will almost certainly be higher because they're coming out about one every two days. And this makes it especially handy to have a way to just throw a genome at a piece of software and come out with a database. Now, we're going to take the second one from the top here, uh, sequenced and annotated by a uh, collaborating institute, JCVI, and that's Coxiella bernettii dugway 7 e 912 and That just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Now, before we do anything with the files, even downloading them, we need to tell the software that we want to make a database. So let's go start up our pathway tools and take a look at how we do that. 